Hey, welcome back to the Plum Pot channel. My name is Kerry, and in this video, I will be showing you how to create your own symbol in KiCad. But before we get started, I just would like to remind you that if you are enjoying the videos, to please give them a like and subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below if there's any tutorials that you would like us to do. So let's say you're busy designing your next project using KiCad and you're busy drawing the schematic and you find that this component you, you want to use doesn't have a symbol in the supplied libraries or you can't find it anywhere on the internet to download. So no stress, all you have to do is draw it yourself and with KiCad that's very simple and I'll be showing you how. So for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to draw a symbol for this HX711 IC over here. If we open up the datasheet, we can then have a look and see what our symbol would generally look like, what all the pin names are, and we also see which package it is. This is only really important for the footprint, which we will cover in another video. If we open up KiCad, let's see if the component we want is in one of our libraries. So if we place a symbol and we start typing the part number of the component we want, you can see that it currently isn't in any of the libraries that we have loaded. You can see some other ICs that we have here, but nothing that matches the pinouts that we need. So let's create a new symbol. Go back to your project explorer and on the top here, find the button that says symbol editor and give that a click and this will be the screen in which we will be creating our new symbol but before we create a new symbol we should first create a library to store all of our custom symbols in that makes it a lot easier to use it in future in other projects instead of having to redraw the symbol each time and having a library also helps you keep track of where your symbols are. So you could create a library for resistors and put all of your resistor uh, symbols in there. You could create a library for ICs like we are now and then put all your symbols in there. It just helps keep things organized so that you can find it again in future. To create a new library, click on File, New Library. Then put it in a logical location on your computer so that you can easily find it again later. We will call this new library Plump Pot. Click save. And then it gives you the option to choose it to uh, your global library table or your project library table. So this project option means that you can only use this library within the project that you're currently working on. And global means that you can use it in any project in the future or whatever. So I would suggest putting it in global, then you'll always have access to it. Perhaps you would use the project option if you are using a component that you know you will never use again, but or maybe something with sensitive information that you won't want to put in another project by mistake. But for most cases, global will be good enough. Next, we will create our new symbol. To do that, click File, New Symbol. Now we will select the library that we want to place our symbol into. Since we just created it, we can do a search. And there it is, Plum Pot. We add the symbol to that library. And now we need to specify the symbol properties. So our symbol name will be the part number of this component. That just makes it easier to use in future. And then we know we're dealing with the, the component we want to deal with. Um, a default reference designator. So if you remember from one of the previous videos, the designator is a unique ID for each component that then can link to your component on your PCB. Now, there are some default de designators that are used for certain components and it's a good idea to leave it like that. So if you're creating a resistor, then you would generally use R, a capacitor C, an inductor is L. Um, and in our case, we, we are drawing an IC, so the designator would normally be a U. 
So let's leave it as you. Number of units per package, it's just gonna be one. And everything else we can pretty much leave as is. Click OK. Now we have the start of our new symbol. It is showing the symbol name and the designator on top of each other. <laughs> on the right hand side here, you can see all the tools available for drawing a new symbol. So we can add some pins, we can add text, we can draw different shapes. So this is what we have and what we will use to draw our component symbol. But what are we supposed to be drawing? <laughs> Now, the best way to figure that out is to go to your components data sheet we have over here. And normally on one of the first few pages, they'll have something like this, uh, a pin description or an, an overview of the component. And this is actually the perfect example of what we need to draw. It has the shape of, of the component generally, and it has all the pins spaced out nicely on the edges. So if we draw this, then we'll be good to go. So back in KiCad, all we need to do is pretty much draw a rectangle with our 16 pins along the sides. So if we select here, add a graphic rectangle, and I'm not sure how long it will have to be, we can adjust it, and draw our rectangle. Next, you come over here uh, to the add pins to symbol, and click on our diagram. Now we need to specify our pin properties. The first pin we are creating is pin one. So if we look at the data sheet, we can see what the pin name should be, VSUP. It's a good idea to try and match these just to make it easier to work with uh, when uh, comparing with the data sheet. So our pin name is VSUP. Our pin number is pin number one. The electrical type, this specifies what type of electrical power it is. I mean, what type of electrical type it is. So in this case, this is a regulator power. So we can specify that as a, a power input. This is quite an important field to set because it will help with your design rules with your PCB board, where um, KiCad will be able to tell you then if you accidentally connect two outputs together, for example. Our graphic style, I won't go into that now. We can leave it as that. Orientation, so we are going to connect eight pins on this side and eight pins on this side. So pin number one falls on the left-hand side here. So we want this right one because the little circle indicates the connection point for the wire. So any wires that we draw connecting to our other parts of our circuit will then connect on this little circle. So we want that facing outwards. And everything else is just kind of cosmetic. We can leave it as is for now and click OK. Now we have the new pin on our mouse and we place it where pin number one should be. Let's put it over there. <laughs> so it is very clear that I haven't made my rectangle big enough to fit pins on this side and this side and six, eight pins down on each side. So we will definitely have to replace this rectangle with a bigger one. But I'm first going to create all the pins and once I then know how that all looks, we will then draw our rectangle afterwards. So I'm gonna speed this part up so you, you don't have to sit through it. <laughs> Great, so I have now finished creating all of the pins according to what the data sheet shows. So now we can see that the rectangle we drew, we drew at the beginning is definitely not going to work. So if we select our pointer tool and try and highlight it, there we go. So now I have the rectangle, but I also have the name. So let's try and it isolate. We have our rectangle, we delete it. And now let's draw another one. Give enough room for the labels and draw a bigger rectangle. And that looks a lot better. Now we can put our name back. And as you remember, they were on top of each other like that. So we would have had to move this anyway. So we just move it out of the way so that the designator and the part name are separated and easy to read. 
Okay, so the next thing we have to do now is set some properties for our symbol. So to do that, simply double click anywhere on the symbol and this window will come up, the library symbol properties. Here we can already see our reference is set, the value is set, and we need to set the footprint and if you like, the data sheet. So to set the footprint, we will click on this little icon here and it will open up the footprint library browser. So this will open up or let you see the, the footprint libraries that you have installed with KiCad. Uh, on the data sheet of our component that we are busy drawing, you will see that it specifies that this component uses a SOP16 package. That is a standard code for one of the standard packages. So in our library manager, we can scroll down to the different packages. Now this is an SO package because it's SOP. And if we come to this next list, we search for the SOP packages. Here I found them. So over here, you can see we have a SOP4 with some dimensions, SOP8 with some dimensions. Now this just means this is the SOP package with four pins. This is the SOP package with eight pins and so on and so on. So ours is an SOP16. Now, the dimensions on the data sheet specify that our SOP16 package should be around 9.9 .9 by 3.9. Now, we don't have those exact dimensions on the footprints here, but for now it'll be okay because the pitch is the same. So the pitch is quite important. The pitch here is 1.27 and on the data sheet it is also 1.27. So then we know that the spacing between the pins is correct and they should be able to fit properly in order to solder them. In the next video we will then actually design a new SOP16 footprint that will match our component exactly, the exact dimensions, then we know that it should fit 100% without a doubt. So for now, we will just select the SOP16 4x4 by 10.4 by with a pitch of 1.27. So we will associate this footprint with the symbol we are drawing uh, so that when we place the symbol in, a, in our project, then it will already have a footprint linked to it. So that when, then we can then more easily design our PCB board without having to go <laughs> and do this later. It is also always good practice to specify the location of your datasheet. Uh, this way you won't have to go searching for it again in future and maybe you won't find the exact same one and you know the information might clash. So it's, it's good to just specify the URL of where you found the datasheet. Then you always have it on hand. If you would like to specify some more information about this symbol, the component in general, then you can click the, the plus here and it'll add some more fields. I don't know, maybe you want to specify where you want to buy it from always, <laughs> like a specific retailer where you want to always buy it from, or I don't know, any other information that you want to specify, you can always do that here. So we, for now, won't specify anything more, so we delete them. And everything else you can pretty much leave as it is. So click OK. And that's it. We've pretty much created our symbol. So now if we go back to a, a normal KiCad project and we open up the schematic, this is one we were using in our previous tutorials. And if we want to place component, specifically this component we just made would be nice. <laughs> we can scroll down and if you remember our library was called PlanPod. So over here you can see the new library that we just created is now listed as one of the options and here's the new symbol that we just drew. So now we can select it and place it in our project to use as a normal symbol. And there you have it. That's how you create a schematic symbol in KiCad. And just a last minute reminder to please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out a lot. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.